So I had to download GarageBand onto my phone, create a natural fart noise with good for you with my body, and this good. is what came out. Can you guys hear that? Ready? That was beautiful. Yeah, that's that a, that's, is that's impressive. That's that's a, a, Ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting from parts unknown, somewhere in the greater Boston area, welcome to Bamboozle.Boston, the only New England podcast show that combines two of your favorite activities, specifically drinking and music, into an unforgettable user-friendly experience. Join us as we educate you on the chemistry, history, successes, and failures of some of your favorite alcoholic beverages, still with on-air sampling, live music, and special guest appearances. But wait, there's more. Hang on, because we're diving head first into the world of music and pop culture as it relates to the finer things about alcohol, its origins, proper way to consume, all rolled up into one very convenient podcast. Hey, Sean, you know what rhymes with Friday? What does, Mike? Beer. <laughs> and the other thing is, See? why beer? Because you can't drink bacon. <laughs> here to inform, and here to inform, to inspire, and to imbibe. It's Mike Grady, Mark St. Jean, and Sean Cochran. Yeah, buddy. You know what? I that joke made no sense, and I understood. I got that it. That was one of the better ones. That was one of the better ones. That was I'm fantastic. Glad I could tickle your funny bone. That was a lot more energy than I was expecting out of you. <laughs> You've, you've been sitting there clicking and, and typing. Oh, I, 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 I was in the midst of doing research, okay. so I'm, I'm a school teacher, so I was very focused. Mm. Now that but then oh, when I get in show. front of the kids or I get yeah. in front of a microphone, it's a whole different story. <laughs> Thank so, you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, we, do, do, we, we, should we introduce the guest right Please, away? Please, let's go right to the All guest. Right, so we have Adam McCauley. Did I say that right? It's pretty easy, right, Adam yes. McCauley? Yeah, you said it. So Adam is, uh, you are a, a, a I mean, we, we have a lot to talk about because I, I see we have a little bio here from you. And you're a musician? Now, before we go into all this stuff, yes. I just want to okay. make sure, just yep. before we get the technical stuff out of the way, yes. I can't hear you guys in these mics anymore. We could do, I could hear them two seconds ago. Well, let's, that's let's it. Give I can you hear you through. More, let's give you a little anyway. more gas. Is that, is that better? No, that just made me louder. Sorry. You don't Did have you check one, two. Can no, you hear us on. now? No. No, You I guys can't. should be, uh, everybody's oh. there. Oh, there. Now I can hear you. I can How's hear that? you there. All right. All right. Try again. Check one, two. Okay, oh, I know is. what that was. How about me? Can you hear me? I mean, I don't know if it made a difference. I no, it did. Sure I wasn't going to be like, oh, See, shit, we just recorded three somebody hours put of stuff. A, somebody no put something with a lot of buttons in front of me, and I just <laughs> did a lot of this. So <laughs> I right, may right. have, you know, It works, done it something. doesn't work. It works, it doesn't work. I think I, I, think I know exactly what it was. Right, now happened, that I've though. interrupted your flow, please continue. No, 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 that was good. Thank you for bringing that up because <laughs> it was a goof session on my part. So, so Adam McCauley, um, musician, um, and can I just say right out the gate, you're, you're a social worker, correct? That's correct. Happy uh, Social Worker Month. This is the month oh, of social right. work, right? Yeah, this actually, is like somebody, a big yeah, thing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really, uh, yeah. that's good. we should celebrate that because, you know, Absolutely. You're, you're, you're helping people. And I received gifts. Do you really? Well, you know, I, I got a knock on the door this week. Okay. From a professional colleague, you know, and, and got okay. a, I got a wink and a nod and, you know, some some blueberries and watermelon. I mean, who doesn't want blueberries and watermelon? That's a good day. That's a yeah. pretty cool gift. Let's actually, you know, too. there was chocolate in there too. I, chocolate. I can't, okay. I can't forget about the chocolate. <laughs> Advertising materials and such as well. But hey, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was made aware of that because um, somebody very close to me is also a social worker. Yeah. And she, she yes. is like, she and is. I'm like, well, here we are. This is perfect. So Adam came in, and Adam, you're going to play for us at some point during oh. this. This uh, didn't oh. be right. This time. I don't know. I didn't know that was part of the. the well, deal. Uh, well, um, we'll find you a guitar at some point. Okay. Uh, right. We'll come up with something. I'm sure there's one around here somewhere. Um, uh, maybe. And so now that we've introduced Adam, we should definitely talk about what Adam was nice enough to grace us with as far as a beverage. Ooh. But can we do the booze log first? Oh, we'll go in there right now. And I then just... we'll talk about it. Dude, do you Why, think I'm, thank just, you you think I'm just going to leave you hanging here without I the... Uh, <laughs> the... Where the hell is... Oh, there it is. <laughs> so... Oh, shit, you guys got sound effects and everything. <laughs> Booze, the first frontier. These are the voyages of Bamboozle.Boston. Booze date Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. 2021. Join us as we explore all types of alcoholic beverages, bringing history, cockeyed perspective, and to boldly go with so many fine human beings have gone before. Tonight's booze is beer, and we'd like to welcome everyone out there to... The Booze Log. But you didn't say what the beer was. Damn, you're good. That's That was... 
Two for he, can, two, man. He, he can say what the beer is. It's the oh, beer yeah. he brought. <laughs> do, you want to, he bought. do you want to introduce the beer that you do, that you graced us with? What, what did you bring? Yeah, yeah. Pass one of those on over here. Let's, yeah. uh, let's it, give it's you the time, full description. It's time, anyways, to crack these. I, so, I, I think. please. The most so. important thing you need to know about this is it's from a local brewery. It's Bear Wolf Brewing in Amesbury, Massachusetts. Okay. It's um it, really it's up and coming. They actually just they sold a or they. Wrote a deal, a distribution deal with Night Shift. So now Night Shift oh. is distributing for them. They're going to be all over the place, you know. Cool. Um, friends down in Groton were just like, oh, wait. Because uh, I was mentioning it, talking about that. Like, I think I've seen that. It's so a, Night Shift, all over the, Night Shift know, is all everywhere. The so now if, the night, if, they, if they're going to piggyback with Night Shift, this is definitely going to find its way where it needs to go, into my belly. So, so yeah, this is a this is a 6.5% IPA. Excellent. You know, uh, I... Just even thinking about trying to describe beer the way the the creators of this beer do, namely uh, Stevie, Wyeth, and Matty, are the three brewers over at, okay. at Bear Wolf, and and they not only are they brewers, but they they really they're artists um, in the truest sense. Okay. And um, and I think in a societal sense, talking social worker, the three of them are also um, up for uh, shaman awards too. I, I think we could si- consider them to be the the shaman or the shaman. Oh, you'd like to shaman. Sh- a shaman. Oh, we're saying shaman. shaman. Sh- okay. Shaman. And that would, shaman. Shaman. <laughs> shaman. And that would be. You have to explain that to me. So the, that the shaman is a what? It's a, it's bringing peace to one or something or. Well, they provide the uh, the tribe with an inebriating brew. Got it. Of which brings about, uh, you know, a cathartic experience. That was, that was an excellent pour on your wow. behalf, by the way, Very because nice. Mike's looks terrible. Mine's, I'm, I'm experienced. Mine's yeah, rough. Very, I, mine's I, a little I, foamy. Yeah, done, I've done this once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give it a let's give it a haul. Oh, it smells good, man. It does. This smells really good. What a great nose. Oh my gosh. That is like the nectar of the gods. Oh, that's that is really wonderful. good. Wonderful. So wow. I'm sorry, I'm oh, the brewers' dude. names again were Wow. Stevie. Stevie. Stevie's oh. kind of the, the head honcho. He kind of came in, you know, he had from what I know, started as a brewer at home. Okay. He taught me a lot. Um, you know about home brewing because I became interested at one point making ciders and whatnot. Okay. Um, Maddie is another one. You know, kind of right. Maddie and, and Wyeth are the other two. Um, you know, magical beings that that create this. Anybody that makes beer know. is definitely a magical being. <laughs> yes. So you know, not to not to uh, not to talk about too much. Yeah, they, you know. But um, Wyeth is also the entertainment manager for any musicians out there looking oh, to uh, okay. oh, very nice. kind of get in touch. But well, so that's so this this is a place that you perform on your website, which is feel free to plug that gigs for Adam gigs for Adam. dot com. No number four. I'm talking about F O R. Spell it out. Don't be lazy. Gigs for Adam dot com. Four. Okay. But you know, there's not really much on there anyway. It's just all my music so, and everything. But there was a, there was a video of you playing outdoors, I think, at the brewery. All the videos, yeah, the videos stuff. and stuff, which I thought was that cool. Was, Gives you an idea what the, what the what it's all about. That was pre hair making its way to the eye. Now that okay. this is like after COVID, now this is going to be a whole new experience here. You know, I'm going to kind of take things to the next level in terms of my performance. Yep. offerings when I go out there because I got this this fucking. So dip. is it is that uh, like a like a Jason Newstead headbanging thing you're gonna get into or? <laughs> I was thinking more <laughs> like a little bit of that. You I was know, thinking more could, like a flock of seagulls dude, kind of, but the 21st century hey, version. Hey hey hey. What? No, <laughs> flock, flock of seagulls Watch is completely it, different. It goes all. No wait, then, then I'm thinking of something wrong. I'm no, sorry, you, I'm thinking you, of something entirely different. I know what you, you want to say. Is, this is simply what? red over simply here. Simply red. Yes. Yes. It's just it's the, 80s type thing. The know. perfect but curl. But that's coming back. You. I mean, a lot of that shit's no, coming No, no, dude, back. listen. I'm, I'm on board with you. I'm totally on board with you. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Bringing some steez I like to the stage. <laughs> 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 oh, it's great. This this is a fantastic beer. This is really, you know, I'm I again, I've, I say this every time we have IPA, but I'm not an IPA guy. But this is really good. It's cloudy. It has a nice cloud. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the cloud. Right. Um, <laughs> it is... This is really good, and I love IPA. Uh, I think and this is fantastic. How to describe this beer? It is. Um, it reminds me of like cloud candy and all that sort of. Um, it, but it's unique. It, it's definitely. I'm pretty sure we're dealing with a hazy IPA. Hazy here. IPA. Sure. You know, again, I hesitate to even really go forth and try to describe too, too much. But um, you know, coming just from layman's terms. The what they do there with with their brewing magic, and mm-hmm. when I say it's magic, I, I don't mean that in like just a a funny like complimentary sense. I mean that they go back and they really like um, religiously work through, and and they'll have 
uh, you know, like a thousand sampling, you know, kind of um, carboys, which are like, you know, the, the five gallon jugs. Yep. With, and, and they'll go through and sit and kind of be like, oh, I don't like this. Let's tweak that. And they'll all, you know, share ideas. And so with that being said, they'll very rarely make the same brew twice. Okay. So you, what you're enjoying right now, you may never enjoy again, you know, so... <laughs> This so, is why being, you know, we're going to get all philosophical and live in the now, you know. So, I, so I spoke, with, I spoke with Jay Barnum um, from the tap about an hour before right now. And uh, I may have had a cocktail down there too. Uh, but anyways, I talked to him and I, and I said that we were featuring um, the Bear Wolf. And he goes, he goes, they make awesome beer, but they never make the same beer twice. Mm. And it's funny you just said that because, so they're just making it on the fly. They don't, I, listen, guys, if they're listening, uh Write these recipes down because I think this is this is this oh they is, do this yeah. is a keeper for no sure. they're able to recreate them and they do they they've um you know kitty kitty pizza party is one of their beers that they'll do um, as part of their anniversary and the um, names the names let's just let's kitty, just say kitty pizza party kitty, yeah kitty pizza they party. have the did best we names the ever name in this one? sorry no this is foggy galaxy foggy and galaxy. Um, yeah we've kind of we kind of just jumped right into it uh, you know well with no you know, particular I, direction but. I have here on their website. They called in a galaxy far, far away. We double dry hop all the hazy nectar with the down <clears> under's <throat> finest Vic Secret and Galaxy. But which way does the Milky Way spin from Australia? I well, think so it goes left. It's a valid question. Say. Yeah. <laughs> and they even say, but don't get too attached. You know, we only make these once, probably. Mm. <laughs> That's funny how they do that. It's really, it really good, though. I mean, I, you know, it's like. God, the names are you know amazing. when it comes to restaurants when I go into a new restaurant and I order some meal that tends to become the meal for the restaurant that when I go back there so that this would be a struggle for me oh my god they have something called bananas and blow <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fantastic. Oh my god. okay which is it's a delicious beer very is it, it tastes very much like bananas in a in a pleasing way you know wow and I understand what you mean, um, you know, Mark. I've heard that from other people that um, you might that oh, we want you to make the same beer. And, and the philosophy behind it, though, and what I can also uh, attest to, not necessarily the philosophy. There, there I was going to say there is a philosophy behind right, it, right. but um, that's for you to go in and talk to Stevie about. Uh, whenever you go in, you are always going to have a very sim. I mean let's put COVID aside, you're going to have a very similar experience with a very, uh, you know, in just um, welcoming, enjoyable atmosphere to be in. Okay. They have, you know, obviously live music. Mm -hmm. They have games there. So you can bring your kids. You can bring your dog. The, the, they have, the dog thing's they have cool. free treats even for the dog, you cool. know. All and right. like last, uh, you know, my fiance was there the other day. She says, you know, there were like, like 15 dogs there, you know. I think... Um, <laughs> depending on how much you like dogs, that off, could be an awesome thing. Do they offer the plastic bags? Are they th available in case, you know, a dog takes <laughs> care of Does business? it get messy? That's, um, you know, the bottom, whoever's bottom barrel in, in the, uh, the the bar staff there, that, that's their job. <laughs> okay. That's the, uh, so we, we have poopers scoopers. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, there's never, you know, it's a very clean place. That, sure. I mean, especially with COVID, the, their um, yeah. standards and practices are completely 100% better than sure. any other place I've seen. Um so neither you've never been there. I've never been to. And you've never been. I've there. never been. The funny thing is, two and a half years ago, I was there, and I thought it was the coolest thing. You're right. It was. We went there. They brewed their beer there. There wasn't a lot of people there, but they had the game games at the table. You could bring your own snacks, and I loved the experience. And the reason why I went there is because I had a friend of mine call and say they have a beer called Mr. Grady, which is after my, which is my last name, and I was in shock. And I tasted it and it was fantastic. And I found found out that that's when I found out about Bear Wolf and they rarely ever make the same thing twice, mm. which I thought was a pretty cool thing because mm. every all the beer there was really unique mm -hmm. and I and I loved it there. So, but also one one other thing, Mark, just to speak yeah. to those um, you know quote unquote naysayers of of the idea of not making the same beers, they do, they will always have the same category. So if you like this hazy IPA <clears> and you go back and you say, oh man, I really liked Foggy Galaxy. They're gonna say, okay, we'll try this one, and it's gonna be made with the same, like you see, I, like I again, I don't want to get too into, it, but the citra, right. you know, these these, um, Steve, he, he, they use a lot of the same ingredients that will give sure. you something that you're looking. So it's for. a similar animal. So you'll just you'll go in you a of, looking for one thing and be pace, like, right. damn, I found something I like even better. Sure. Right. You know, can't wait to see what they come up with next. That well, it's of, it's yeah, like yeah. pulling a pulling a thread on a shirt. So you, sure. th we pulled a little thread, and then this beer will go away. And then we'll go and then just pull on the thread a little more. We'll try this one. Try this one. Try you know. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna continuously make 
similar beers, and it's going to be one of these, you know, just see where it goes, I guess. I'm assuming that's how they do it. Yes. So. And I highly encourage you to go in, and they'll they'll allow you to sample. They have okay. you know, sours, you know, they've got br- like darker beers. Uh, got, you know, all what, t- what time do they the- close? <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we may be going there after this. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, Nine o'clock. So uh, eight o'clock. I don't know. You get look at the website. <laughs> let's 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 talk about you a little bit. Okay. So you're a musician. Yes. And your I'm gonna guess your primary instrument is guitar. That's correct. Okay. And do you do much electric or is it mostly acoustic? I sold my electric. Um, okay. Not long ago. I decided. I, I you know. You gonna stick with acoustic? Do we swear? Do we swear on this podcast? Yeah, you can swear on it. Yeah, absolutely. I, just, I kind of figured, fuck it. You know, like. Sure. I was making recordings with the electric, and now sometimes I I wish I didn't sell it, mm-hmm. but. You know, at that time, I was really down. I was trying to take an artistic approach of downsizing all my extra shit, you know, yep. to give myself less options, you know, in terms of the directions that I want to go. Because I still, to this day, struggle mm-hmm. with that when I come when it comes to creativity. Yep. Because you know, when it comes to like, it doesn't really matter who's watching. It's about like what I'm doing for myself, you know, as an artistic practice. Which is um, where you should approach it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I tend to go off and. A million different direct. Like one week, I'll like to do this. Next week, I'm into that, and then okay. I'm back to this. And cool, you know. Yeah, you you started off kind of like a drummer, there with, yeah. though, didn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, you, you started off playing yeah, drums. Yeah, yeah. So my father, my career. father was a drummer. He was in a band called the Trademarks, of which you can look up on YouTube, and you can see him also with some luscious hair. All right. Um, playing the drums, and um, they were actually they were the you know. Uh, what inspired me to become a musician? Were, were they no- local or the? Were yeah, they? yeah, they okay. were a Boston-based band. I th- I forget what it was. It was like BCN or something. Somebody had mm-hmm. these video recordings of them, pretty like decently well done for back. It was like 1984, mm-hmm. like the year before my dad was like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna be a dad." <laughs> um, right. Yeah, like somebody found the recordings and posted them on YouTube. I, the band members are scattered about now, and I don't think it might have been one of them. Or it could have been a friend of somebody. They okay. had sound engineers. It might have just been someone at BCN that was uploading all the stuff. But mm-hmm. one day, somebody sent my dad a message and was like, "Hey, we found you on YouTube." And oh, he's wow. out there. That's you know, cool. So that's wicked. Pretty cool, like video. So he must the, have been. He must have been the like, trademark. Yeah, here I am. That's you know. He must have been yeah, happy. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, um, the trademarks is the name of that band, and they are it, it, not that I'm trying to promote them, but it's it's kind of it's funny. Um, yeah, yeah. What is it? It's up to you. Is that what the one? Oh. Yeah, you could play it if you want. I mean, it's. It's good. Did they fucking music? Did they trademark yeah. that music? <laughs> yes, <No>. they did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not afraid of that, anyways. Here, no, no, well, absolutely obviously. not. Yeah, are we still? But are we still on? By the way, we oh, are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there um, it goes. So, so Adam. It. So that said, your dad is a drummer. Yeah, I see something here about steel drum or hang drum. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as you know, just. I was give you like a quick snapshot. You know, my dad was a drummer. I started playing drums at a young age. I was in the high school band, you know, all that stuff. And then, you know, through college, um, I was in just rock bands, playing out in bars and all that stuff. Just so getting playing my, out in bars as a drummer. As a drummer, yeah. Oh, okay. So you you could sit out. at a kit and and play. Uh, yeah, you know, I've lost a lot of my chops these days. I have a digital mm-hmm. kit down in my basement now. Okay. That I try to, you know, like. Um, but anyway, you know, there was one year where I was lucky enough to land a gig as a steel drummer. On George's Island. This is the, the question. Off, I was, yeah, off the coast. <laughs> I'm Boston. fascinated with steel drums. Yeah. So my yeah, buddy, so cool. my buddy's dad was uh, like a like a um, what do you call it? like a bookie down in Southie and all that stuff. And like, okay. um, I, they had a steel drum band that they were paying something ridiculous, like eight hundred dollars or something per, per gig. And they're just like, Adam, you know anyone that plays the steel drum? And I'm like, No, nah, no, obviously not. I look on eBay. I find like the you know the nicest steel drum that I can afford. Mm-hmm. Buy it bang on it for like a couple you know because this was like early spring early, i mean mid-spring early summer so just to, just to clarify the steel drum is musically well, well, yeah. tuned right yeah so yeah there this, are note this, values this particular drum is in the key of c um mm-hmm. and then i had another one in the key of g so i i could play along to some melodies of songs and like things like that but for the most part i just used a drum machine mm-hmm. and improvised for hours on the cool. silent there were these cool. environmental cops that would come up to be like how's this kid stand in the sun for so many hours just banging along you know, and, and now you look, I'm 35, I get sun damage, and I'm like, oh, jeez, right. yeah, <laughs> right. you know, festivals and everything. It's like, oh, shit, sunscreen, so, should have wore it. So do you, but, do you read music? Yes. You do? Yeah. And do are you able to read music and put that into the steel drum as well? Well, right now I don't. Like, yes, I would be able to. That was how I was doing it. Okay. Um, 
back then, but the, now what I'm playing is called the hang drum. Okay. Whole different thing. My hang drum's the key of D minor. Mm -hmm. And typically I don't actually use it to cover songs or play material that's like pre-written because of the way the notes are lined out. Okay. They're lined out in such a fashion where you can actually play the notes together to create, you know, chords or harmonies. Okay. Um, that would be F major too, right? Yeah. 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 Um, the relative major. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you could, you could, do, you could play both. <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd have to, sometimes I get a count back on the, the keyboard to get right. my relative majors and minors figured out. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a really fun instrument and mm -hmm. I use it for yoga studios and, okay. um, you know, just for a general kind of relaxation, if you will. Again, when I'm like, you know, being creative, it's more kind of about what's, um, <laughs> helping me kind of internal, like intelligent, like make my internal states more intelligible to myself. Uh, meditation is like another yeah, kind sure, of sure. way to look at it. But you know, you made, you made mention of a few, um, meditating not meditating directly in the comments here uh but yeah i wrote you some weird comments i kind of just like shotgunned a bunch of stuff no i, I like, loved it I didn't it was, think it too was much cool so, so you you say that you're you do a lot of exercise you love like exercise yeah so like you know prior to covid i was gigging mm -hmm. every day and even just like a, an hour-long like gig yep is a pretty good workout you know sure. so i was like you know keep maintaining my shape while drinking like a fish and then COVID came and I wasn't maintaining my, my shape, but I was still kind of drinking like a fish. Yep. And we all know what happens, you know, not sure. long after that depression sets in, of course. the gut sets in, you know, mm -hmm. and then thankfully unemployment set in too. So <laughs> Right. Like, there was some backup that there. Ball, yeah. That snowball just kept on rolling, baby. And then, you know, I went back to work and like, instead of continuing to just like drink, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the end of this, I started back uh, as a social worker in August and it was just like, ah, shit, you know, I got to really look at what's been going on here. Mm -hmm. It was cool when it was like, uh, you know, more controlled and like an environment where I'm having a beer or two while I'm, um, running an open mic or something like that. But you know, when it gets to the point when you're just, and like, I think a lot of people are in that place right now. Yeah, it's just like, absolutely. And this is, you know, this is prime speaking. We should definitely talk about this. I mean, as you, yes. of course you are. Yeah. But uh, so, so you've, you found, I'm not to interrupt you, of course, but you found, you know, your meditation and you found, um, I know you're heading towards the, uh, the exercise portion so, of this to kind of d to dial your brain back in. And I know it works for a lot of people. It's, it, exercise is really, really good for you, of course. There uh, oftentimes is a silver lining between every bad situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a, you know, just a, a sh kind of a shit family situation go on, which led me to kind of um, like just want like was feeling like, you know, kind of just unusual. You yep, know what I mean? Sure. So I went into a doctor and they were like, yeah, your, your blood pressure is fucking through the roof guy. Like, okay. what's going on? Like, and I was like, yeah, you know, this, that, the other thing. They're like, OK, so this is probably. But, you know, it's also highly related to the past year, like not just one, it wasn't just one isolated event with like, you know, a family member, you know, kind of lashing out or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was, um, you know, just kind of like all of a sudden the straw that broke the camel's back. And they said, here, take, take this antidepressant. And mm -hmm. I was like, he, like went home. Just the idea of it made me sick. Just like, you okay. know, and like, so they gave me this, this, um, it was citalopram, mm -hmm. you know, and just, so as I've moved forward and like, I decided not, you know, I'm, I said, fuck the medication. It's, yep. kinda, it's one of those things where, yeah, of course, I think a lot of people that start medication like that, they bounce, they bounce in and out of it because they're like, I don't need this. This is hurting me. This is making yeah. me feel funny. And but then more so than just that, that it's like, I, it was an experience where it's like, okay, yeah, I can ex I understand my blood pressure side. What have I, I've been eating chips to beer, yeah. you know, have I been exercising? No. Have I been playing music? No. Am I probably like depressed and anxiety is causing, you know, fluttering heart rate. Yeah. You know, so there's all these different logical reasons that come into play and just uh, like having to actually sit with that is like, all right, I can dive deeper into that beer mm -hmm. or try to do something about this. And the first thing, you know, because art or music right now is so kind of in the background, the first thing I thought was like, let's get back in shape. Let's get just, yep. let's get, you know, let's get running. Let's, I got a weight bench. I'm downstairs. I'm like, I'm still, you know, doing that every day. Mm -hmm. um, minus today. Okay, <laughs> I, know we, I, I feel like we interrupted it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. I mean, we're, hey, this we're, is we're going back. Yeah, to the this is something right. I've always. This is really cool. Like I said, you get this whole backdrop going. This is like I've always. I listen to podcasts. I've always okay. thought going on one that's really it's just sure. you know, a fun experience. But going back to just like anybody that might be you know continuing to listen at this point, God bless you. And like if you're going through these types of feelings and experiences as a musician, 
then turning back to your artwork is going to be the most powerful thing you can do. Yes. And not turning back to your music as a performance art necessarily because, you know, barring live streams and other kind of virtual options, you know, we're very limited in our ability to perform at this time. But to kind of reconnect with the parts of music that might have, you know, inspired you to start in the first place or to do something even different with music that you never thought you would have, you know, like I'm talking about kind of, um, you know, making your own recordings that aren't the style that you usually make or, you know, mm. just completely like uh, doing something completely unconventional with your music just to, you know, to create something. Sure. And then at the, at the end of that, say, you know, what the what I'm getting at is doing this process, in my belief, helps you um, bring to light your internal um, emotions or uh, energies that you're having a hard time understanding on a conscious level, mm -hmm. you know, because they might be, um, you know, what's the word that Freud says? Like when you push something repressed, you know, like it kind of helps bring something out. Um, and then when you're done, like, and I've just been experiencing that l a lot more lately because I've been doing a lot more music lately, yep. you know, and, um, and I think once you start doing that, it makes a change in, like, you guys all of a sudden randomly invite me on this podcast. Like, right. like your world starts to change around you. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll go with that. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if this being here is for the better or not, but, you know. <laughs> Maybe if I keep playing, COVID will go away. Who knows, man? So I'll keep, is, I'll... Would, would, you, would you say that that's a left brain, right brain thing? So you're kind of mixing the two. You're, you're jogging all, you know, use, doing your art, you know. Uh, they do music. say they, they say that. I'm no neuroscientist. But yeah. They say that it, it involves both sides of your brain. And sure. I think what I understand more so is, like, coming from a psychology and sociology degree is just um, – you know the 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 emotions that that come up and the different um, behaviors that will result from those emotions. You know, and and how to how to change them if need okay. be. Okay. You know. So, can I get a little geeky for a second? Oh yeah. So Ableton Live. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this th that's your 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 primary uh, DAW. That's that you're my using. my digital audio workspace. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you just said that you 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 would jump into things that are different than you're normally doing and what like so a normal session for you would be what would you set up a click and just kind of start riffing out and then work it that way and then so um while i was performing i didn't record at all uh mm -hmm. which is um i regret I, I should have um or i should say very little you know i was so focused because i would be out gigging during the day at nursing homes and then out um at a bar doing either a you know, solo performance or running an open mic. Okay. Almost every night of the week. I was looking, I was doing my taxes for last year. I was like, holy shit, I was really busy. Right. <laughs> Making a ton of money too. <laughs> um, but no, um, years past, I did things with spoken word, for instance, where okay. like I took um, Terrence McKenna or somebody like uh, um, Rupert Sheldrake, uh, Ram Das or Alan Watts or some, some philosopher, maybe, you know, <laughs> did some of Tim Leary too. And like, so you, know, things. you would do this live in front of people? No, 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 no. no. This is just, it? this is more of a um, creative, um, okay. like it's almost like, you know, just uh, taking a set of paints, mm -hmm. slapping them together. Like what's his face? Jackson Pollock we'll slap the paint together, yeah. you know, kind of making something that's more abstract or experimental. Yeah. And you know, a lot of other people do this too. I mean, I've seen it out there and okay. you know, um, it has your band camp up. You mind if we play yeah. That? Um, so there's, there's one on there. It's a very long track. It's on the Plastow recordings one and it is called dig and it features Ram Dass. He's going to talk for about a minute just to prepare you if you don't want to listen to this whole thing. And he's talking exactly about depression. And funny enough, you said, uh, pulling the thread on a, you know, um, you, you were talking sure, about yeah. pulling yeah, a thread. Sure. He's using a description of sending um, a bug up a tower that's carrying a, 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 a hair and then brings, you know, using a thread and then pulls a rope as a description to, you know, use a, okay. a tiny bit of realization of saying, oh, shit, I'm depressed, and taking that and using it as stepping back and saying, wait, who's depressed, you know, and why? And all it takes is that little bit of awareness. So. Right. And then, you know, it, it jumps into... Um, an electronic track and you know that whole so it okay if i deal. play it i have it up yeah go for it man all right um, awareness is like the sky so this is this is this is ram das like ram das like speaking yeah sky. okay they come and they go like for example you go from i'm depressed 
Is this copywritten? See, that's Pro- the unawakened response. Nah. <laughs> the awakened response I don't think Ram Dass' stuff is. is. Okay. Depression. See? I mean, it's just a different place you're saying it from. I mean, the f- interesting thing is the fact that you even notice the depression means there's a little part of you that isn't depressed, because who's noticing? Is the notice of depressed? Mm-hmm. And you begin to play with that, just that little flicker of consciousness. At first, it's just the tiniest little thread in which you say, this is hell. And then that little thread, it's like the uh, story of the guy in the tower, uh, and his wife wants to save him, and she sends a a bug up the tower with a thread hitched to its leg, and then when he gets the thread, she attaches a string to the thread and then a rope to the string, and he keeps pulling it up, and finally he climbs down the rope and escapes. And it started with a thread, and that's really all you've got at first, is just the tiniest thread of awareness amidst all these raging emotions and thoughts and desires and fears and hopes. And there's just this little thread of it. But it's persistent. And pretty soon it starts to permeate everything. And and there is a stage when it's doing that when you feel gypped because you are used to getting off on the trippiness of your emotions. Are you a piano player also? Not a not a skilled but pian- I mean, pianist. These, pad, these pads are you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I, I gear, that's huh? yeah. Okay. See? Or I could know, I could teach be- beginner piano. And that's about yeah. it. You know? And you, again, you read music, so you could you directly yeah. apply yeah. that. And it's okay to talk over this at this point because yeah. he kind of yeah, sure. his point has been made. I kind of when I look back, I was like, this one was too long. But I made this track for a specific purpose. Really, um, it was. And to remind myself too and you know i've done that in the past where i've taken some random clips like this i'm talking circa like 2009 or something and re-listened to them years later and they mm-hmm. like said something else to me that they didn't say back then okay sure, sure. and so you, you know what i mean like it, that again it's creative thing that like if i was to show most people that they'd maybe listen to it and lose interest <laughs> you know, which is understandable uh, but th- i i do have a lot of other tracks that are a little bit more exciting and and whatnot but um there, there is a whole population though that knows Alan Watts. And sure, Alan yeah, and you know they would actually be intrigued and pulled in by that. So, yeah, or turned off, you or, know, or you know, turned off. Sure. Um, and and again, that doesn't really matter to me mm-hmm. when it comes to the stuff that I'm creating. And I, I actually, <laughs> I got a new computer and I almost lost all that shit. And that's I, why I put it online. Okay, on band, it's only so on band. This was more about know. the process for yourself. Yeah, and. If somebody wants to listen to it, fine. Yeah. yeah, there's so much electronic music out there, and some of it, so much of it, is so better than, <laughs> so much better <laughs> than mine. That I'm not really pushing it or trying to do much with it, aside from uh, learn how to be a better producer, for a hobby, you know. Sure. Like, but I make my money as a performer. Right. Um, right. When that, you know, and when it comes to, you know, music. Right. You're actually, out, you're, <laughs> and you're all doing covers when you're doing that with your guitar and you're at the yeah, bars and stuff. Yeah. So it's all songs people know. Right. Um, and I've played with you. I've played at the same place with you um, and watched you play. And, and, you know, he really has this thing where he pulls mm-hmm. in the crowd where, you know, there's a table of people that they're now part of the show. I mean, and then all night but you're mean, referring. Like performing, like singing with you or, or just kind of Just whatever. conversation, just okay. banter. Singing, it, it, dancing. Cool. All right. Throwing bottles at it. me. Bottles, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like no. when you go to see Adam, you're not just watching somebody play. You're actually there with him. You right. Know? Which is kind of cool. Which is good, yeah. That's very important. I've developed this skill because I learned from one of the best. His name is Paul Wayne, and he opened for Johnny Cash, oh. Ray Charles, Fats Domino. Who did, you know, did you know him? <laughs> he, was, he was my mentor, yeah, okay. for quite a while. He's living in California now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if he's listening to this, what's up, Paul? Paul, um, you know, and, and he's excited to get back to gigging too, as I'm sure cool. every musician on the planet is. Um, but yeah, he had a. a I should have brought. I, I could. Uh, I should have brought it with me. I can send it to you, or whatever. But he has a picture with all the famous people that he opened for. You know, and if the, if there's a famous person from like the '70s that you can name that he didn't open for, I would be impressed. It's like he's wow. everybody. Celine Dion gave him a kiss on the cheek. You know, Willie hey. Nelson took him backstage. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. All, you know, it's it's some of the <laughs> <laughs> That's He said uh, when Johnny Cash was getting off stage, he says, "All right, get out of the way, boy." It's my turn. Let me show you how it's done. You know? I don't expect nothing, nothing <laughs> less from right. Johnny Cash. Yeah. 
He brought his parents back to see Ray Charles. Ray Charles, I like that. I like that. And a lot of his stories you can read on his website too, Paul Wynn. Um, uh, you can find him. It's actually posted on Facebook. So if you look up Paul Wayne on Facebook, um, he he types up like you know when he met so and so or what happened this, at this time. And I, you know, did he, has he written a book yet? I'm sure it'll be compiled into a book. You that know? would be I, I, uh, yeah. interesting. Interesting It'd set be of an stories. Interesting book to read. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he um, yeah he has a lot of connections. Okay, you know, but I'll I'll leave any more Paul Wayne talk out because he's um, he's got his own thing going on. I don't want to. Sure, you know. but he's um, I'm gonna uh, I'll just he was I'll my just, teacher. Yeah, he's, he's my your teacher. Yeah, he had a very engaging uh, performance too. But I've decided I decided you know uh, years ago to um, you know like he's allowed me to take certain things and mm-hmm. run with them, but I've decided you know there has to be a certain amount of originality to things you know sure. you can't just take yeah. the same little some tricks and shticks other people are doing and, and recreate them albeit i was doing that for a little while you know yeah, but, at, that, but, that, at the but that's same, okay that's that's complimentary while to he him, was in the course. audience watching oh he was you know what i mean like yeah did you give him you a know? look and we like, like we would do a lesson he would do a lesson <laughs> and then go out to an open mic and perform and stuff and yeah you know i'd be like all right so now i'm gonna and he would just got got finished teaching me the thing and say all right go do it now you know yeah. so that's the type of uh re- it was a very we were best friends type type thing too and a very teacher yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool i like that um yeah i mean when he did when he moved out to california too he was nice enough to give me a lot of his um you know referrals that he was leaving behind Mm -hmm. so but yeah so uh, i i've never seen you perform i i'll just be totally honest with you and this is making a new friend here of course absolutely and somebody that i can i'm going to seek you out you know gigs for adam right and you you put your schedule up there on your on your website as well. I used or? to. Okay. Right now it's uh I got a, I got a gig on St. Patty's Day. Okay. I had one today, like I mentioned, mm-hmm. and uh, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so your gig today, you you'd mentioned that it was um it was for some nursing homes, right? Well, this one particularly was for the Bill Ricca Council on Aging, and okay. it was for a memory cafe. So okay. this is a virtual event um, broadcast. To nursing ho- specific nursing home, actually there was a couple of them. nursing homes. Okay. I was in my phone, so I didn't see the gallery view. I couldn't see everybody. Okay, but I know because they were talking to them. They they all had them, per, you know certain individuals' houses. Um, mm-hmm. You know, kind of just doing it from their kitchen and the senior center where it was from, and the um, the library had it going on too. Okay, oh. so that you know there was a couple different locations. Um, and do yeah. you, is your repertoire different for that crowd? Oh as yeah. A- Okay, so well, mm, there are some crossover. There's some, you know, there's mm-hmm. some, there's some, uh, some songs that will intersect generationally. You know, mm-hmm. Johnny what, Cash is a big one. Okay, so Johnny um, Cash. It, it, what what is like a, a, a traditional older tune that you know to to reach out and grab some of these people? You are my sunshine. Let me call you sweetheart. Oh, okay, <laughs> let me call you sweetheart. That was one of my grandfather's favorites. Was it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. Wow. What, yeah. what do you think is the oldest song you do? Oh, when you when you're shit. digging in for something, shit, probably something some of, that you would never bring to like Beowulf. Uh, probably some, of, and maybe I would even bring it to Beowulf, especially if it was gonna be like next week or something. But right. probably more the older Irish stuff that I know, like um, like uh, Tu Ralura, uh, like uh, that's a probably one of the older songs. Um, sure. Shit, that's a good question. Maybe some of the patriotic stuff that's been around forever. Right. God, okay. I, God knows when God bless America was right. It's probably I don't know. But yeah, you know, there's probably some pretty. I've never. That's a good question. I'm gonna like Thank go you. look at that now. I, I don't know, but my guess would be the Irish yeah. stuff. Okay. Well, that funny stuff goes I'm, back hundreds of years. I'm 99.9 like nine seven percent Irish myself. So I'm oh, a, okay. the other point something percent is like a magical elf creature that is actually now extinct. <laughs> sure. so I'm a dying breed. Just carry that yeah, gene. Yeah, It'll be fine. yeah. I just found out I'm 27 percent Irish. Oh well, there you go. Well, enjoy Which your, is going to be good for next week. Yeah, I'm having a point. Having a point. Having oh, next week point. we're going to be at the Tap next week. Yeah. On uh, we're going to be Facebook Live at the Tap Brewery, St. and Patty's that'll be Day Tuesday episode. Tuesday evening. <clears throat> and the show will actually drop probably. That'll be a tough one because I get a, I have a breakfast date at eight a.m. Right. at Peddler's Daughter. So so tune in to Facebook Live Very and you'll close. get to see it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then on the podcast, it'll be sometime after that. And and Adam, you said, where was your gig again on St. Patrick's Day? 
Was it's it? in Derry, New Hampshire. Is it? So a, it's at another nursing home. A nursing home. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like open to the public where people can go and see. No. No, it's not open to the public, and nobody can go and see me except for if you're locked in those doors and you I have no other choice. I was going to say choice. because what's the COVID <laughs> the COVID protocol um, for you? Do you go into the building? And well, have, every state's different, okay. and um, I haven't really gotten the specifics on this one. Mm-hmm. And um, I won't be giving out the name of it just in case. Yeah, I don't know. Of course, oh, that's fine. I don't know what's going on with any. I don't think I. I don't think a lot of people know what's going on. But what I do know is um, I've been feeling absolutely fine. I'm fully vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Oh, you are. Although I think vaccinated people can still carry it. Um, a lot of people that are in nursing homes are fully vaccinated at okay. this point. Good. They're okay. Good. relaxing. You know, I think they're. Um, Pulling back on a lot of their restrictions, from what I've seen with the CDC now saying that like we can hang out without yep. masks on. And so you got fully vaccinated. Is that because you work in nursing homes? Mm. Oh, sorry, well, yeah, it's because I'm a social worker, um, you know, and from the facility that. That's I right, because Aaron already got vaccinated too, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that makes second. you front line. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh. So, I mean, I met, that's where I met Paul Wayne at the place where I work now, and he would go in and perform there. You know, which was how I. That was oh. when I first saw him. And I was like, oh, my God, what? how is this guy doing what he's doing? Like, And it was like, I used to, I've always been a performer, and I used to have that kind of, like, knack, kind of, you know, that piss and vinegar when I was younger. I was always up, because even when I was a drummer, I, <clears throat> when a drummer, I would want to open, like, because I knew how to play the acoustic from, you know, yeah. from younger age. Type. Sure. Like, oh, I mean, just play, like, one Clapton song and open a few, you know, before I, you know, it'd be so cool, because then I'd play the drums. I'd get so many chicks, dude. Like, you know, and, like... <laughs> <laughs> they're like dude you're five foot four just like just accept it now I'm, just, um, I'm five foot six for the record okay have you ever gotten a uh, have you ever gotten an unexpected request Duly from, noted. from from one of the nursing home folks like like you know you're, you're thinking well these guys are all going to dig the 40s and 50s but then somebody says i'll oh, give me like banana ram or something Banana Rama. I don't know. Oh, what that's a random that one to pull up. But all right, that's a good one, though. Yeah, thank you. The, the big eighties. The easy answer is um, is no, no, Move not. On. Well, <laughs> if I got a request from somebody like that at a a health facility, it would be somebody that it was younger. Yeah, that right. That was there for other reasons aside from age. Um, you so know, pretty age, much, age when when you're disease. seeing an age group, you're kind of reading them pretty well, then. Yeah. Yeah, and I do, you know, I do ask. It's um, I, as a, a social worker with that type of, you know, extensive elder care experience, I'm pretty well versed in communicating and sure. and and reading that generation. Everyone says I have an old soul, right? You know, there you go. I don't know, like, so somebody, rain and blood slayer. This boy's soul, you yeah, be like it's old. Someday, yeah. that's going to be the situation. That someday, somebody will request. Can you imagine the acoustic version of South of Heaven? Rain, 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 rain yeah, <laughs> South of Heaven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that will be a thing. Imagine that. You know, don't call me sweetheart. It makes perfect sense because that was like a, a song. But in those let me would, call you sweetheart. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. Bing Crosby. Yeah. Bing Crosby. Yes. And then, you know. Ten minutes from now, I'll be requesting Maiden <laughs> from the the performer, from the mm. guy that shows up with his accordion. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, that's great! Yeah, um, they come from the music generation. A lot of people that are in their eighties, seventies, eighties, nine. The older you get, the more significant music was to them. Do you know why? How come? Because there was no fucking cell phones. There wasn't yeah, even TV. Right. There wasn't sure, cable. Which had, makes perfect sense. Shit. Right. One old lady would say, we would sit on our old porch. We would sit on our porch until 9 o'clock p.m. Yep. Until the police officer would come by. Tell us to you, you quiet down, you kids. We would say, we, they would, she was just she thought it was so bad they they'd be out there till nine o'clock wow. singing songs. Dangerous. Like Sing. yo, you guys want to do dangerous. And and Paul confirmed it. He's like, yeah, you know, when the kids would go to bed, the parents would sing. I've been working on the railroad. I'm like, are you shitting me? <laughs> wow. Like he's like, yeah. Like they would get around. If anybody had a piano, that was better. But if not, they'd just be like, all right, let's do. I've been working on the rail. <laughs> and you see it. Like I you know, today, we're working with a lady with dementia. She's very anxious. She'll get up and start, you know, um, exhibiting anxiety if, you know, unless some sort of intervention is provided. And really? singing sure. and music is one of the best things you can do for someone with Relax. Alzheimer's and dementia. And, you know, just sitting there and they, they forget exactly what they're anxious 
thoughts were of. Right. You know, and then they just kind of, and then does that remind you of anything we were talking about earlier in this conversation about how using your, your art as a way to kind of yes. connect right. with those right. parts Absolutely. of yourself, you know? I think it all directs towards like living in the here and now and not focusing so much on what's to come mm -hmm. or what you fucked up with in the past. You sure. Know? Anxiety is in the future. Depression is in the past. Right, right. I would think that music therapy and what you can do has an incredible effect upon not only the elderly, but I know that working with children it has the same type of effect. Mm -hmm. And I, I can, I've seen it when I worked, I worked at the VA many years ago when they would have people such as yourself come in and do that. And there would be such a monumental change in their entire demeanor and some of them would remember and they would sing along mm -hmm. and they would go right back to their state after the song was over and it was incredible to watch. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're doing is not only an unbelievable service but you're bringing joy to those people that may exist in a world that there isn't a whole lot of joy there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's awesome. Good point. Thank you. Good yeah, point. you know, the one thing that really grinds my gears that I wanted to mention too is when somebody looks at a musician and I'm sure a lot of people have felt this and they say like, oh, you're a rock star with that undertone of like, get over yourself, you know, you, right. you narcissist, you know, like, and it's like, listen, I never once said or thought that I was a rock star, mm -hmm. you know, I know that the rock stars do exist, you know, that type of thing, mm -hmm. but what I'm doing is, is, it's called art, you know, and like, I don't know if some people are just a little mm -hmm. bit less able to understand that, or, right. you know, just, again, even me just saying that it's art is like, okay, whatever, you... Most of the time, yeah, like, when people are criticizing something you do, it's because they wish they could do it and they can't. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, there's a large portion of that anyway. So yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. just, I kind of, what made me think of it, you know, if we're speaking to other musicians that might be, you know, listening to this thing, you yeah. know, also dealing with these things of like, what the hell am I doing with my life? You know, like either, you know, I don't know if you get shit from me. If you don't just, if most people maybe are up way past this point and don't care. But, you know, sometimes when you get that shit that it's like, oh, yeah, what do you still think that you're, what are you trying to do here? You know what I mean? It's like, right. we got into it for some reason, you know, whatever right. that might have been. And right. that's, that's, you well, know. It's keeping people sane. It, yeah, thank it, you. I think thank people you. with, yeah. with overactive minds uh, that are musicians, you take that music portion away, that that mind can get mischievous. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? In, in one way or another. So it's very important to keep. Um, but I also think you're fighting the good fight, you know, with these people. The things that you bring them and you go into these nursing homes, anyone with an ego or rock star or whatever they think we may feel, mm. it, that's not at all the case. You no. have to, I think that it takes a level of humility for you to go in and do something like that. And then in the interim, you know exactly what you're doing with these people. And it's the things that I can't imagine a lot of people would sign up for. And you go in and you do it. So it, I think that's so much more commendable. It's easy. I, it's easy to stand in front, go up on stage in front of twenty thousand people. I think that what you do is considerably more difficult. Oh, thank you. That's very you know. Right, because it's all give. It's all exactly I mean, what what it's you're doing give. is giving. Yep. I mean, and someone who 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 likes to give is receiving a gift from doing that. But I think a lot of people yep. maybe wouldn't go into that situation because. What what are they getting out of it? Kind of attitude, but obviously they would get something they didn't realize they were getting once they started doing it. So, yeah, my boss has a cool saying: when you lift someone else's spirits, you you know receive the same gift in return. Mm -hmm. um, which is I'll go with that. Yeah. Accurate, absolutely. So, uh, rumor has it you play. Yeah, you bless us with a couple songs. I'd love to hear something. Where are we gonna find a guitar? You know, know. I've been I've been thinking of like what you guys want to like hear, what I should play. You know, I was like originally, <laughs> I was originally thinking I would play originals, seeing as how it's like, oh, maybe a, a chance to promote one song. Oh, which, I mean, I also do a lot of wood carving, as you can see here with the. Uh, oh, is that you? Is that you yours? Carve? on the really? back of it? <clears throat> I should have brought this, but we don't have um we don't have bottles. It's a bottle opener. Yeah, I started carving cool. what they call wood spirits. I got a whole bunch of them. And how do you do it? Do you obviously, start with uh, a piece of wood. Do you exactly. use a knife? That, that or was do a you use that a was a uh, piece of pine I found a, on a walk with the dog. You know, so it looked like it was pretty that much intact. Really I used a, And what is your primary tool? Exacto knife. Oh, yeah, no kidding. I just like out of a toolbox. Okay. You know, <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know what we have to do? Have to no, that, was done. that is the woodworker's go to tool, I think. There was a, the, the um, eyebrows were done with a the little, I, there was a wood in the hair thing. It was a wood carving kit. There was a little, there was one other tool I used. But cool. All right. I, I have a picture so, of that. I'll put that in the video. Okay. Where should I, where should I yeah. stand for this bad Larry? Well, yeah, right um, about there. So we get the one mic. We're going to kind of point that in your general direction. I'm going to mute every, all these other ones here, and it'll it'll beef up that one. Mark is going to be. So I would say in between the guitar, Mark, and the vocal would probably be the best way to 
just tighten it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can use the cans. It's like your own personal modest. Mark, can you give a little more slack on his headphone cable, please? There's an extension there. Yep. I am very experienced with using short headphone things. You know, when you're home recording and you don't know, you don't realize, you're like, oh, should I get like stand like Sean, this? can I get you to go <laughs> to the camera awesome. yes. and turn it toward me just a hair? Oof. Before I switch it. No, the other way. A little more. Good. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah! This one always gets people. You know, you know, hey, hey! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's it. Something like that. Oh, I love that you shit. Do something to get people's attention first. You, know? you got yeah. mine. <laughs> you know, someone said talking. You there, you, you, you. Please, you. Me. Shut the fuck up. Okay, here we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> get one of these. There's one banjo. It's the dueling. Here's the second one. This is that that, that first one was me. This is a Paul Wayne one. Here, you ready? Two banjos, right? So you can also kind of do. <laughs> nah, let's do. Let's do this. this is great. We'll do a little. We'll do a vocal piece. Okay. Well, Love to hear it. What I'll put there. Um, we'll give you another. We'll give you another. This was actually. This not only. This is a Johnny Cash thing, and an Elvis thing. Okay. We um, like them. <laughs> see, I like to just give credit for where I might have found some of my material and altered it. You know, I'm not trying to steal stuff. But almost all of music is uh, borrowed, you know? Of course. Of course. It's homage. It's what works. You know, it's like... So just with a full disclaimer, Elvis Presley and a few other people who also copied Elvis have done this already. But if you haven't heard it yet, it's a Johnny Cash song, mainly sung the right way. It goes... thinking that actually this is completely my original material so if we're talking about um getting the the crowd involved this is what i'm talking obviously the the song i'm playing is not my original material you know i would say to the crowd all right everyone yep everybody needs to join me in doing the hum that johnny cash first yes. does in and it's, song. A, it's not quite in tune have you ever if heard you do this it correctly song? yes yes yes, yes he, I does. Have. he starts with a hum and do you know why he's doing this hum? Anybody? Because he, forgot, no. okay, he no. forgot the lyrics. Is he looking you know, for the key? If you're at a nursing home, because he had a nice breakfast and he was saying yum. But <laughs> no, you say to people with, you know, uh, it's because especially new age, everyone's trying to balance their chakras, right? This hum puts you in perfect alignment and oh. intonation with the universe. And okay. if you do it correctly, magical things will happen. But if one single person in this in this audience is not doing it, then you're gonna you're gonna fuck the whole oh, thing dude, up for everybody totally else. We're totally gonna hum. We're so totally humming. Everybody has to do it. And I'll give you an sum. example too. All you right. don't even have to be on. Can we, can on we hum key. and harmony? Good. Okay, that's right. perfect. Now we're gonna do that again. This is the important part because this is what's gonna matter. Okay, take a deep breath. Ready? Mm. Third. Yeah, you feel your third eye opening? Mm, right? Mm, what if I run out of breath? What happens? All right, well, Mike <laughs> fucked it up for all of us. It, our <laughs> chakras <laughs> would be aligned, but it's okay. Except I coughed. I just, it's my asthma. <laughs> now, it's part of the fun of it because you never know what's going to happen there. You never know if Mike's going to just completely not even be, understand how to breathe anymore, but that's okay. You know? <laughs> he has a great announcing voice. <laughs> We'll give you that. You know, All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. So I'm going to give you the thing that I was talking about, Elvis doing and all that shit. This is what it is. Ready? Okay. You go if there's a um, attractive person, girl, guy, whatever your, your thing is, both, I don't know. You go, you look at him. 
I keep a close watch on this heart of mine Keep my pants up with a piece of twine If you should ever get the urge to prove you're mine Pull the twine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that, does, do. that doesn't sound like the original. Mm -hmm. That's a little different. Mm -hmm. You can modulate too? Yeah. I'm going to humming, 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 pull that twine down. All right. All right. Let's um, sing the song how it kind of really goes. Mm -hmm. Everyone's in train. You're doing it naturally now. That's good. I didn't even ask you. As sure as night is dark and day is light. I have you on my mind both day and night Yes, happiness, I've known proof that it's right Because you're mine, I walk the line You guys see what I did right there? I, I saw it I pulled the fast one on you that was, What was it? Well, you just you did a quick mod, right? No? No? Anyone listening know what I just did there? That's another thing of music If you ever mess up, don't tell people what you did I'm not going to tell you. You can go back and listen. Oh, my God. I can't. I don't. I, we'll have to watch the video. I find it very, very <laughs> easy to be true. I find myself alone when each day is through. Yes, I'll admit I'm a fool for you. Because you're mine. I walk the line. All right. I'm going to, 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 I'm going to get it going, guys. All right. You've got a way. Keep me on your side You give me cause For a love that I can't hide For you I know I'd even Try to turn the tide Because you're mine I walk the line Now this is the, the octave lower I'm gonna get real low I keep a close watch On this heart of mine Keep my eyes wide Open all the time Keep the ends out for the tie that binds Because you're mine I walked the line <laughs> Beautifully done See? Dude, that was, that How was, could you help but I, not be engaged with that? Oh, you know? yeah, I, I need, well, I first of all, it's Johnny Cash, you. and you're doing it per I'd love it. It's that was a stellar moment in was, Bamboozle history right That there. was amazing. It was a cover song, but it's never going to be done that way. Never. Again, it's never been done that way before, and it's not just because of the, the you know, the semitones that I might have been singing it off or any imperfections. There are, there are no because, imperfections. Um, there's no way we could recreate those interactions there, and that is the whole reason why I perform. Well, that was really fun. Um, in and of itself. I feel like I just you know? gigged, kind of. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, I'm glad I could, you know, that was... assist. <laughs> that's great. So, I mean, because I don't know what note you were holding. I reached. I was too. I was and you were on something. I, I don't really know what notes um, are, technically. Okay. But... Technically, most of the time I was sending the tonic, but occasionally I would go to the fifth. So, would you like to hear a very inappropriate song that really gets yes! it's turning? <laughs> this that is, is a the podcast. Best kind of we can song. totally right, do it. So, anyway. Because I'm going to, you know, I could play you some original tunes. My original songs tend to be very emotional. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I have not. Yes, There's I have. Scene, I There's have. a scene where the cup gets a, uh, a guitar, you know, and he's singing, <laughs> I feel <laughs> emotional. <laughs> you know, like, and <laughs> sometimes that's kind of how it goes, you know, when you're, when you're writing original songs. So we're going to try to avoid that today. But this song, it's called Country Boner. Uh, okay. All right. Is that okay if I sing about erections here? <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's perfectly okay. We sure. It's totally acceptable. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of swears and bad words in this song, so if your kids are watching, just remember they've Earmuffs. already heard them. No, it's all right. You have a disclaimer, under 21, not allowed. That's yeah. right. Okay. <laughs> if you're going to get pissed off about it, write Mark a letter. Yes, yeah, Mark. Yeah, always Mark. Open. So this song is uh, it's written by the same guy that, that um, or, you know, it's written by Pussifer. Anyone know who Pussifer is? I'm so not, the I'm band, not. what's, what's, what is Pussifer? What is Pussifer? Uh, no, Pussifer is a band. It's by uh, Maynard James Keenan is the, the singer. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, perfect, oh, I have. A perfect circle. He's the same singer from Tool. You know, those guys. Right. Yep. Um, and he says, I fuck Dolly Parton. I fuck Loretta Lynn. I fuck Barbara Mandel. And I fuck Oliver Kin. 
I fucked Minnie Pearl. I fucked Elvis Presley's a little girl. Oh, I fucked the Judds. I fucked the Judds. <laughs> My country boner. It won't go down. It won't go down. It won't go down. My country boner. It won't go down. <laughs> that's like awesome. That? You like that one? No, it's not. <laughs> So that's Pussifer wrote did that. Yes. Wrote that. Okay. Okay. They also have a, a hit. It's called "World Up My Ass," and okay. that comes off the same as a two-song album. Just okay. Two funny songs, and for the other, like they uh, they do a lot of really. They just came out with a new album called um, "What Is It?" Apocalyptic. No, existential reckoning. I'm sorry, that's apocalyptic. Anyway, okay. the, the song goes on. I fucked Willie Nelson. I fucked him deep inside. <laughs> Fucked Elvis Presley in the bathroom where he died. I fucked Dwight Yoakam. Johnny Cash grabbed his ankles and he hollered when I poked him. I fucked the Judds. I fucked the Judds. My country boner. It won't go down. It won't go down. It won't go down. My country boner. It won't go down. It won't go down. Nice. Nice. Well yeah. done. That was that was totally appropriate. I I really enjoyed that. That's yeah. <laughs> so that's another one not, you know. You got, you got me crying. I did cry because I was laughing so hard. I really like to do that. It's tough when there's, you know, like it's a, uh, you got to be appropriate. It's mm -hmm. great. Like that's perfect for, you know, 10 o'clock, 1030. Everyone's got a good buzz going. Sure. At a bar, whatever. People are two-stepping. Yeah, you don't want to open one, with that. I got to be careful with that one at Bear Wolf, you know, because right. it's a family-friendly place. Yeah, you know, sure. Right. Don't offend any dogs. That's going to be like 8.59, you know, or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, 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 they stop their entertainment at 9, 9 p.m.? You Bear know, um, what do they usually do? I think they actually do from 6 to 8. It's been so long now. I forget the, uh, the okay. exact times we were playing. Sure. And I, I was doing some earlier like um, outdoor things for them. So um, it's always best to just check their website because they have some pretty damn good acts going through there. And Mike, what um, is what is the website? Do we have the website? Is it on here? It's got to be. Is it Beowulf Brewing? Hold on. You said website. I just want to make sure we get that info out there. I will tell you, bearwolfbrewing.com, B-A-R-E, wolfbrewing.com. Okay. So when I first started doing music uh, therapy stuff, I went to actually the place where I'm working now, believe it or not, and was volunteering seven years ago, something like that, to do a program called Music and Memory. Okay. There's a video out there called The Live Inside, or it was a documentary on Netflix that shows exactly like what we were talking about with people coming out of their shells when they hear music mm -hmm. with dementia or something like that. And when I went and volunteered, this one lady showed me a song by Tom T. Hall. I'm, I'm hoping I can remember all of it right now. It just made me think uh, we're doing kind of silly songs. It's called I Like Beer. Ooh, Would you I like to hear it? I like beer, sure. yes. Bamboozled. Um, if this is my last song, I'll have to think better. We'll give you a better one. But sure. we'll try. You ready? Go. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an old song, if you can picture like people sitting around a uh, big saloon or something, like all kind of okay. swinging their feet over the balcony, like singing together. All right. With one central figure, Tom T. Hall, you know, singing the song, and he goes, In some of my songs, I've casually mentioned the fact that I like to drink beer. In this little song, it gets more to the point. So roll out the barrel and lend me your ear. I like beer. It makes me a jolly good fellow. It's not really that funny. I like beer, but you know, it helps me unwind. Sometimes it makes me feel mellow. And this is where you gotta go. All right, everybody, you gotta go. <laughs> Repeat after me. If I, you know, you gotta go. Makes me feel mellow. Ready? Your turn. Makes me feel. All right, next time around, we're going to do that together. We're going to have to practice. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Whiskey's too rough, champagne costs too much, and vodka puts my mouth in gear. In this little song, it gets more to the point. So roll out the barrel and lend me your ear. I like beer. It makes me a jolly good fellow. Yes, just one or two beers. 
here, it helps me unwind. Sometimes it makes me feel mellow. Your turn, ready? Makes me feel Perfect, yeah, yeah. Last night I dreamed, I passed from the scene, and I went to a place so sublime. The water was clear, but it tasted like beer. Then, then they turned it all into wine. And I don't like wine, I like beer. <laughs> it makes me a jolly good fellow. Yes, just three or four beers, they help me unwise. Sometimes it makes me feel mellow. Last time, it's your chance to shine. Ready? Makes me feel mellow. Uh, I need another beer. <laughs> Great job, yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause. Nice. Very nice. Couldn't have done it without you. Couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, this is, so, so this is kind of what your show is like. Yes. You're, you're engaging. Well, I, I think it's great. Then again, like, you know, if people are like sitting and I clearly see that they don't want to be, they just got to the fucking bar and they're trying to talk right. to their friend. Then there's this asshole up on stage. is like, hey, hey, say fucking makes me feel mellow. <laughs> Come on, fucking do it. You know, then I'm not like, then and it's like, all right, let's play a little... <laughs> You know, something like right. something I know they're gonna like. <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> you know. Do like a like a medley. There it Some is. Yeah. Never thing, mentions right. words addiction. Yeah, that type of shit. Um, or like the popular, um, you know, the popular. Um, Crossover songs that I would do at the nursing home. One's like, uh, sitting in the doctor, or is it sitting in the morning sun. I'm sitting when the evening comes, you know, watching the ships roll in, and then I'll watch them roll away again. So I'll just sit on the dock of the bay, watching the tide roll away. Ooh, I'll just sit on the dock of the bay, wasting time. Do you guys know how to whistle? I do not. Is it time to whistle? <laughs> it wasn't, but it's okay. We're going to skip. <laughs> nice. Yeah. My can't Somebody's whistle at all. I can't. I, I can whistle, but I'm going to let you take it. So if people all of a sudden did start paying attention, that could be a little, you know. Hey, hey, yeah, we're drawing you, over. Hey, we these can, guys hey, are trying whistle. to talk, and we're not going to bother them, but you look like you want to whistle, good sir. <laughs> you know, it's the things you learn, the tricks of the trade, you know? That's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> right. Good sir. <laughs> oh, you got to have some Layla. Hell yeah. Yeah, what, what cover music you can't go without, you know? What to do when you get lonely? Genius song, too, by the way. It's a songwriting no song. No sweating by your side. Yeah. You've been running and hiding those two hours. Getting real sexy with it. No, it's just my foolish pride. Lay love. You know. You got me on my knees, lay love. Begging, darling, please lay love. Beautiful. Yeah. Just carrying the low note there. Right. Giving you a little teaser out there if you're watching this. You know, no, come, this is, come this see is me great. Play now, you know. Do like Stevie Ray Vaughan. People don't try to kind of attempt these ones because they're right. so like iconic. Um, yeah, iconic. And, and it, oh, it, it, the playing that you mess it up. But once you're up there and you hear, you know, you got good reverb going on. Just a shuffle beat. You listen to. Yep. Oh, a two, a three. Do that for a little while. You know. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Once was a good thing Held that love in your hands Now I reach to kiss your lips It just don't mean a thing Well, that's a go shopping Awesome Yeah, it's a dream There's a go shopping I've let a love go back you know, like something like get kind of serious into I'm, it. And right. I'm starting to like, yeah. I can almost hear the glasses clinking in the little mumbles. Right, right. I want to get back out of like It's starting to feel like a gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Smell well. the stale beer. Can you, do a, can you do a chorus or something of, or, or even a whole original song or something that works for yeah, you? Yeah, sure, or, sure. Because I really would like Shit, to hear some of stuff. 
Well, you want to hear something I wrote a while ago or something sure. I wrote what, recently? Whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean, entirely up to you. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do this one because it, it applies, but it's a song I wrote in like 2009, 2009, going way, way back when I was first finishing my sociology degree, deciding like, oh my God, what a mess we've all gotten ourselves into as a, as a species. Like, you know. The song is called Society. Okay. Kind of Bo Diddley, yeah, Bo yeah. Diddley style. I'm gonna get real into it here, yeah. Living in this goddamn society. What is the answer? I don't know. One, four, five, you know. The only thing to do is just let go. The rich get richer. The poor get poor. We take a weekend and then <laughs> we still Very nice. Nice, yeah. nicely done. So, to get, to get, to get, uh, can I say one thing? Mm. Uh, you, you, you could tell you're 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 a drummer at some capacity. One portion of your life, or you're continuing as a drummer mm -hmm. because your timing is impeccable. Watch this, ready? Excellent timing. <laughs> you got to wipe out. <laughs> and you know what? He's playing it's with a, his foot. It's in time. I can hear the foot. There it is. There it is. I sense that you want me to finish the song, so I sped it up at the end there. No, you didn't have to. <laughs> I was enjoying Beautiful. that. That was, that was, was good. That was really cool. All right, sorry. I'm done. I'm going to put this down. I'm not trying to be a attention yeah. whore here. No, 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 no. No, no, you're good. All right, so so that was... i got to turn... i got to change the mic levels again. Hold on. Here we go. Everybody's back up. Okay. So Adam, I really enjoy you as, as a uh, as an entertainer. I mean, I didn't know I didn't know. Well, thank you, thank you. You know, you seem very serious People when we're sitting down. People have said that in the past, and I just like I, I'm hoping they're not just saying it to make me feel better. But no, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. That was actually really or make me feel was good. Nice fun. Make me feel good. I already feel good. They don't even to make me feel better, but you know, to make right. me feel no, that validated was, or something. But that no, was, uh, I enjoyed that. Thank you. So your 
information is gigs for Adam F O R mm-hmm. Adam dot com. Is it yes. a dot com? Yep. Okay. Gigs for Adam dot com. Mm-hmm. And those are links to what your um your band camps and Yeah, everything. It's got my YouTube, my um contact information, all the mm-hmm. recordings, the, the everything's really on Bandcamp. I've been working I'm kind of in the, in the process of, uh, of learning more about vocal production right now, so I can kind okay. of increase what I have out there for recordings. It seems the more you learn, the more you're going to want to spend on Amen. equipment, right? Of course. <laughs> right? As <laughs> yeah. I can see here. But yeah, man, um, gigs are starting to come back. I mean, I um, I got a call today from a mm-hmm. place that, you know, in Danvers that I used to work for. I, I used to have 200, you know, plus clients going. Wow. And um, I'm hoping that uh, they'll, you know, slowly and, uh, you know, start to come back, and I can. It feels like it, like it's you know, going to. You know, it, feels it like does. It's about it, to. You know, it yeah. does. And Let's and not jinx it. Let's knock on. Knock can on we? Board, can right? we? Can we just? Can we just <laughs> acknowledge the the elephant in the room, or not quite the elephant, but um, when it does, and I've said this a hundred times, mm-hmm. when it does happen, everybody's got their shots. Um, Charlie Baker has lifted the the. Um, this terrible uh, wave of you know confinement off of us yeah. uh, restrictions um, that it's going to be nuts. So when you do a gig or any of us do a gig, it's going to be an absolute shit show, and it's going to be like the seventies. I've been saying it since the COVID I said started. The same thing, mm. right? So um, I think that we all, you know, everybody that that suffered, you know, the entertainment industry, um, the um, you know the restaurants, the bars. I think it's going to be completely out of control. Uber hope. U- Uber is going to do amazing because people are going to need rides home from, right. you know, uh, I, I think it's just going to be a really amazing time. I think the joy is going to be um, way, way up because mm-hmm. people are going to feel free. And right. it's not going to be a depressive going out and getting loaded or something crazy like that. People are right. going to be, I think it's going to be it's really be good. Positive energy. It's a celebration. It's, it's a, a celebration, celebration, bitches. Yeah, it's a celebration. <laughs> yeah. Celebration for sure. Um is there anything else? We get Beowulf. Let's talk about Beowulf for just two seconds. So Beowulf, uh, Foggy Galaxy. Beowulf is in Amesbury. Go Amesbury. to them. And did we, what did we say? It was BeowulfBrewing.com? Bear, Beowulf Brewery. Type and that's it com. into Google. B-A-R-E, not yeah, 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 yeah. That's yes. that's a good point. The clock. Bear, However, like did, your bear ass. I did enter B-E-A-R. Yes. And it flipped yeah, well, because you're thinking to, wolf, yeah. yeah you know? And it actually flipped it's me a, to the right it's one. It's a mixture of his, uh, his families. It's a family thing. It's very, um, very, yeah, it's a family very woodsy. Times. Yeah, but, you know, it, I mean, hey, if you're a craft beer drinker of any right. sort, you... Should check out Bear Wolf if you haven't already. Absolutely. Amesbury um, Mass. Okay, so I want to thank you, Adam. I want to thank you for, for having coming me. down. Yeah, thank this you. This was fantastic, fun. and I really enjoyed the performance. I wasn't sure what you were going to do because I've never seen you live. And I right. wasn't sure either, man. And I, that was really fun. <laughs> that was really fun. And I love your 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 voice. You're very croony, and your pitch is spot on, and everything everything. I really enjoyed your rhythm. You. Was oh, spot shit. on. True well, rhythm. Yeah, I don't know true, about pitch. I'm still, you know, no, your pitch, yeah. is, your, your pitch, pitch was very very hey, hey. wicked solid. Even Some when you were supposed to hum the Johnny Cash hum out of key like he did in the original recording, you didn't do that. You did it. You did it in the right. Actually, we hummed out of key too. We hummed out of key. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, what do you think? You guys cool? Here we go. This is wrap. great. We're gonna go see Adam uh, as soon as yeah, the we'll come out and lifted. See you, bro. I'd love to see you live, Absolutely. even before Absolutely. that. I, well, I know Mark's a musician. You guys play as well? Yes. Yeah. So we're we're thinking about actually starting an outdoor open mic I'll at Bearwolf. I'll be there. Um, you, we're going to have to figure out all the protocols and the, the safest way to do it and stuff. I and mean, it's just an idea right now. We don't have any plans, okay. but I, wear a mask. I was just talking to the I two can of bring them a slew of horn players with me. So, yeah. you like horn players. Yeah. So Mike, yeah. Mike yeah. plays with the B Street Bombers. I've been with the. Familiar with them. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he plays with them. No Mike, shit. what's okay. the address? Right. What's the web address for the B Street Bombers? That's bstreetbombers.com. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Bay Street Bombers guy. I'll bring. I'm gonna bring my upright. Can I bring my upright bass? You can bring whatever the hell. Can I bring stick? my trombone? This sounds fun. Yeah. The stick, or did you get a new upright? No, 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 the stick. Well, I call it because it's it's upright, but it's but it's, it's a, a stick it's a and it's a stick. stick. Yeah, it's a stick. It's it's yeah. We'll make that work. It's wicked bring cool. The I can't guarantee the right pitch in. or even the right chord progression, but I'll be there with it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 
Well, right. I'll keep you guys posted, and you know, Please obviously, do. my you guys have my uh, Facebook is where I kind of put out any of my information regarding open mics for other musicians. Sure. Um, we'll put your you stuff know, on our website. I'm sure, it's been you know, we're all local enough that we'll find each other. And your know. your dates are on your Facebook more than anything else. You know, my dates, man. I kind of post them as they come up. But yeah, okay. they, like if I had a an ongoing gig, like um, uh, Friday nights, for instance, I would be letting people know, you know, all through the week. Um, right. Okay, you know, awesome. that type of thing. You know. All right, let's bring this thing in for a cool, landing. Cool, thanks, guys. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> We would like to thank you, our guest, Adam McCauley. Awesome job, bro. And to you, all our Bamboozle Dot Boston podcast listeners. Hey, please tell your friends to seek us out at their favorite podcast platforms. Don't forget to ask them to subscribe and give Bamboozle Dot Boston a five, 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 five star rating. I'm assuming that all of you listening now already gave us a five star rating, but if not, please do so. Also, visit our website, www, even though technically you don't have to say that anymore because it's already predisposed inside the web browser browser bamboozle.boston to connect with all our socials and email to send us feedback for any suggestions and please 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 one more please send us your favorite or original cocktail recipes for us to possibly feature from all of us here at bamboozle.boston that would be sean that would be mike that would be adam and that would also be my friend right here mac, mac. saint jean Please safely keep your glasses bottoms up and see you next week.